Hi, this is Frank Taylor at Nature at Your Door. Today's episode is going to be a little different than usual because I'm indoors sitting by this warm wood stove. It's middle of January here, it's really cold, and I thought it would be a perfect time to introduce and share with you my next topic. Today's episode is going to be on water harvesting. Water harvesting. For me, that was a new term. I'd never heard that term before I met my friend Victor in Kenya. And then I realized it's a fitting term because water harvesting is about accessing and containing and collecting water when it's available. Victor is the founder and director of a soil water conservation foundation that he founded in Kenya to help both the ecology and the people of Kenya. So in this video, I'm going to compare the benefits of water harvesting through rain barrels collecting off of roofs and the reasons why they're so useful in both ecologically and economically to Kenya where the building of sand dams helps communities and the environment in so many different ways. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. Here in the United States, it's expected that up to 40 states by 2024 will have water shortage issues. By 2050, nearly half the world's population will be experiencing water scarcity. Here in the U.S. and other industrialized countries, we're experiencing higher and higher costs for processing that water for both home and industrial use. So here in my home state of Virginia and around the United States, rain barrels can have many benefits, both economically and ecologically. During a typical one inch rainstorm, a 2000 square foot roof can produce up to 500 gallons of water that without a rain barrel would be just washed away. Collecting water off your roof in rain barrels can reduce runoff and erosion in the area around your home and in your watershed. A lot of this runoff in, in a storm picks up sediments and pollutants on its way to a nearby stream or river. Using this water for your garden and lawn saves you and the community processing costs. Using this water to wash your car or wash your pets is a guilt-free use of water without taxing the local water system. So the use of rain barrels here in Virginia and around the United States has many ecological and economic benefits to it. But in Kenya, it's a different story. It's critical to the life and health of both communities and the ecology there in semi-arid areas where rainfall only occurs once a year and are far more sensitive to climate change where they're expecting more frequent and longer droughts. I'm Victor Mutunga, the founder and the executive director of Soil, Water and Environmental Conservation Foundation. So Victor is the founder, director of the Soil and Water Environmental Conservation Foundation in Kenya. And he does a lot of different activities and projects in order to help both people and the environment. His biggest endeavor is the sand dam projects. And Victor's going to explain a little bit about them. Uh, I wanted to show you how the sand dams works. And uh, behind me here, we have a, a sand dam. We built it last uh, October dry season and now as you can see is being done in a seasonal river and it has uh, harvested enough water for consumption use to be used by the community. This structure it harvests water during rainy season and uh, is being constructed across seasonal river. So during rain season it uh, harvests water and uh, this water recharges underground water level. As you can see, the way it is, it's full of water. Now, communities before construction of this dam, they were walking long kilometers looking for water. And uh, now, after construction of this dam, 
the, uh, they can fetch water from this point. They put chlorine and they use that water for consumption use. Before the sand dam is constructed, the land is dry and eroded. During the two-week rainy season, the river would flow, fill up, erode, and the water would disappear to the ocean. I wanted to show you a mature uh, sand dam. So here, Victor shows us a mature sand dam and exactly why they're called sand dams. After the dam is built, it first fills up with water, but then in three to four years, it fills up completely with sand. The original river channel stretches back a great distance. People and animals can walk across the top of this solid sand surface, but sand is a great aquifer. 40% of the volume of this sand is actually water. It's a magnificent, brilliant, but simple feat of engineering. The sand retains the water that has been lost to the ocean and prevents it from evaporating. It filters out parasites. It recharges the groundwater. It provides water for riparian vegetation, including planted fruits and crops. The dam can be tapped as a year-round water source for communities. The time that was once used to carry water long distances can now be used for planting, agricultural activities, going to school, and many other productive activities for the community. We have the demo farm for the community. You can see mango there, you can see maize, you can see this grass in the riparian zones of the river which we have done the sand dam. The sand dam is filled. You can see the sand dam. Uh, there, community fetching water. So when the sand dam is filled with the sand, it changes underground water level to come up. The dams are built with concrete and steel and are designed and built by geologists and environmental engineers working with the community. <laughs> There are significant, significant, and extremely well-designed structures, and the community helps build them and receives training on how to build these. Sand dams result in a cascading series of benefits to the community, best explained by Victor himself. Here inside we are going to visit the school and see children, how they planted trees, how the trees are growing, yes, and of the good work that we are doing on how to fight climate change. And uh, you have seen the trees, you have seen how the secretary has talked. Here is where the school fetch water from to water the trees planted by the school garden uh, project. The water is dirty, livestock takes water from here, as you can see. Communities, children fetch water from here. It's the same water they use for consumption use. So also the community is requesting us some purification of this water. So I'd like to emphasize that point that Victor just made. The school and community are getting their water to drink from the same place that these cattle are walking in and defecating in. So sand dams eliminate this problem and the sand actually filters so much of the pollutants out of the water and parasites and bacteria. And so it's much, much easier to treat. Building of these sand dams is a fascinating effort. And if you want to help out, you don't have to be there to help pour and mix concrete, but you can donate money so that Victor's organization can build more sand dams. So if you want to donate, check out the links that I've left in the description that goes along with this YouTube video. You can contact Victor through his Facebook page, through his .org, donate directly, you can find him on LinkedIn, and you can message and talk to him directly about his project and where your donation would go. Remember that your donation has far, far reaching effects. A donation to help this dam helps the community in so many different ways. I hope you enjoyed watching 
this episode of Nature at Your Door. A little bit different than what I usually do. It's been great to collaborate with Victor. Remember, if you like what I do, please subscribe, leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching Nature at Your Door.